All right, so for today's video, I have a topic that we'll be using to bring into the next two videos, and that's the topic or the term or the definition of a sequence, okay? And a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. And everybody knows what a list is, and everybody knows what numbers are, and all I'm saying is a sequence is a list of numbers where there's a real specific order to it. Okay, so example, like let's take something easy and tangible to get this idea going in your mind. It says, write a sequence, uh, write the sequence of even numbers starting at two. Okay, so I think of the list of numbers that are all even starting at two. All right, so we might do something like this. We might say uh, the first term of the sequence is two, and if we're going to write the list of even numbers, the next term is four and then 6, and then 8, and then 10, and then you can kind of see how, uh, well, that list would, would literally never stop. I mean, there's always going to be the next number. And so to say or to indicate that the sequence goes forever and that there never has to be any end to it, we just we put these three dots, and those are called ellipses, okay? So I, I can't write down the entire sequence of even numbers, because that list never stops, but I can show you that that's what it looks like, okay? All right. Now, in order to have this question feed into the next one and the next one, uh, there's some, some notation or there's some symbols that we use to go along with this. Uh, if I ever were to write down something like this, an A with a subscript 3, okay? So A subscript 3. In the context of dealing with sequences, all that would call for is uh, the third term, okay? That's what that means. And then, I, I guess one way to identify what the third term is, is you could look at this list and say, that's the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term, and the third term is, in fact, a six, okay? All right. Uh, you, and you can probably use your imagination from here, but why not do one more? What do you think uh, A subscript 5 means? Well, that just calls for uh, the fifth term of that sequence, whatever it is. And then you could just count uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. The fifth term is 10, right? Okay. So when you see A and then a subscript, you've, it's just indicating a specific term. Third term, fifth term, whatever you want. Okay, all right, now, so keep that in mind and just visually sort of have that uh, as a mental picture as we go on to this next problem, okay? It says, what's the second term of the sequence? Okay, so there's the sequence. And the way I told you that sequence was I just described it. I said, here's what the sequence looks like. It's just even numbers and it starts at two. Okay. Um, and then, I guess on that one, on the next one that you see right there, then I could give you a formula. All right. Now, how do you think you would use this formula in order to find uh, whatever given term you want? You know how it says a n right there, and then n is the input over in this formula? Okay, so here's what you do. If you want the second term, uh, then you let n be 2 in that formula because look at what it says if you do that it says a uh, subscript 2 is equal to and so already it's like that saying the second term is equal to whatever math you would get by putting 2 into that formula that you see over there okay all right so i hope that wouldn't be a, a big surprise to you that it works that way so to do the math, we'll get, let's see, negative 1 to the power 2 plus 1, okay? And then 3 to the power 2 minus 1, all right? Uh, and then we do the math, and whatever result we get from this is going to be the second term, okay? Because right there, the way that we started this off is that you can interpret that a subscript 2 is just asking us for the second term, okay? So let's do the math. This will be negative 1 to the third power 
which is negative 1, and 3 squared is 9 minus 1. Okay, so we'll get negative 1 over 8. All right, so let's write our answer like this to give a final answer. The second term of the sequence is negative 1 over 8. Negative 1 eighth, in other words. All right. So that's how we get started, and when you do the assignment, that's the kind of uh, basic example that you see, okay? Let's take it a step further to go all the way through the stuff that you might see uh, on the My Math Lab assignment or in the book. Here it says, uh, write the second term of the sequence. Sounds like the other one, but the formula is given in a different way, Okay. Uh, it says a subscript n is 4a n minus 1 plus 5. And then it tells us that a1 is 8. So it's like we have the first term, and then this gives us a way to find all the others that come after that. All right. Okay, now, I, you know, we could do this one like the last one, but what I'd like to tell you is that there's, there's a way to read this, okay? Uh, that it'd be worth noticing. I mean, a sub n is, it could be any term. It just depends on what you put in for the n. But a sub n minus 1, well, n minus 1 is the number right before n. And so that's the term that comes before this one. So it's sort of like saying that uh, any term is 4 times the one that came before it. Uh, then you add 5. It's kind of like that, all right? I'll put that in quotes as if uh, I understand that this is what that says if I was to say it verbally, okay? Anyway, so let's do this. Uh, if you want to try to work it that way verbally with what I have there in red ink, then you can go ahead and do that. I'll leave it up to you, but I suppose if if we think of it like the last one and I just want the second term, then the thought process should be the same. It's like, if I want the second term, then I would have to want that to tell me the second term. I would have to let n be 2, right? Because if you put a 2 right there, what's it say? A subscript 2, which means the second term. Okay, And if I do that, I get A subscript 2, 4A, 2 minus 1 is 1, plus 5. Now, how are we going to read that? It says the second term is 4 times the first term plus 5. That is like saying that any term is 4 times the one that came before plus 5. Uh, do we know the first term? Yeah, it's told us the first term is 8. So we'll go a2, the second term is 4 times the first term, which was given to be 8, plus 5. So doing the math, we'll get 32 plus 5, we'll get 37. Okay? Let's write our answer like this. The second term, indicated like so, is 37. All right. So, well, is that one different than the one that came before it? A little bit, but still the same principle and the same way of reading the formula applies. Okay? All right. Now let's take one step further than that, and we'll say uh, uh, this formula given for the general term of the sequence, you can find any term you want with that, write the first four terms of the sequence, okay? So it's, you know, you'd have to find the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and then how would you go about that? Well, it's, if you want, I mean, look at that, it says a sub n, if I put a 1 for the n, I find the first term, if I put a 2, I find the second term. Right? So we could just, if you wanted to, if you wanted to show a lot of work and ha have your thought process involved, we could say, uh, look, the first term, uh, you'll find that by letting n be 1 because in that formula, if you let n be 1, it says a subscript 1, which does in fact mean the first term, is equal to uh, 5 to the first power or just 5. Okay? And then it wouldn't really be any different as far as how you find the second, third, and fourth terms. So I'm not going to see this deal I wrote right there. I, I'm not going to keep writing it because it's the same idea. But, you know, look at that. If I put a 2 for n, 
then I get like so, I get the second term's 25. If I put a 3 for n in that formula, then I get a sub 3, the third term, 5 to the third power, 125. And if I put a 4 for n, a sub 4, I get 5 to the fourth power, which happens to be 625. Okay, so there's your first four terms, the first term, second term, third term, and fourth term. Let's go ahead and write our answer like this. The sequence would go 5 for the first term, 25 for the second term, 125 for the third, 625, and so on and so on. There's no reason that you wouldn't find more terms, it's just... They only ask us for the first four, and there they are, but the list could go on from there. Okay? All right. So hopefully with that assortment of examples, you understand how you read all the symbols and understand what a sequence is. Uh, a few other things. Let's do one more where we find the first four terms, but where the formula is, is different. And then one last thing. Uh, summation notation, how you how you interpret that, okay? All right, now, I suppose with, with this one, I could have found the terms in any order I wanted to. I could have found the fourth term first by putting four in, and then the third term, and, you know, I could have done it in whatever order I wanted to do it. Uh, but here, I'm, I have to find the terms in order, okay? And it's because all that says is any term is the one that came before it plus 9. So if you wanted to, you try to find the fourth term first. It's not going to work. You can take my word for it, but you, there's not enough information. Okay, so let's do like this. Uh, to find the first four terms of the sequence, I know it's like right off the bat, I'm told that the first term is 6. Okay, so 6 first term. And then, so I'm going to put my answer over here in the box. I put a comma. I'm going to put the second term after that, and so on and so forth. Um, anyway, how do you find the second term? How would you manipulate this formula to find the second term? We would need to let n to be 2. Okay? And if we let n be 2, then that formula says a2, which is the second term, is a1 plus Nine. Uh, what's a sub 1? a sub 1 is the first term. That's known to be 6. So it says a2 is uh, 6 plus 9, or 15. So I got the second term is 15. Okay. What about the third term? How would you use this formula to find the third term? Uh, I would need to put a 3 for the n. If I put 3 for n, then look at what it says. It says a subscript 3. That indicates the third term. It says is equal to a 2 plus 9. It says the third term is the second term plus 9. How did I get the 2? Well, I put 3 for n. 3 minus 1 is 2. And the second term is 15. Okay, So I'm going to get uh, 15 plus 9 or 24. Okay, so I get up to the third term. Now, you know, I, you'd put 4 for n to find the fourth term, and I'll just tell you, you'll get 33 for that, okay? You can follow me up to here. When you go ahead and try to do the fourth term in similar fashion and tell me that you get 33. And then it goes on and on. There's, there would be a fifth term and a sixth term and a seventh term and so on. Okay, but that wraps that one up as it is. It asks us to just give the first four terms of the sequence. All right, now on to something different. Now this does not look like the others, and it's it's not really the same kind of problem. But we need to be introduced to this other type of notation and in instructions. Uh, notice it says find the indicated sum, and then we get this symbol right there, which is called the the summation symbol. Okay, and to give a quick explanation of that, uh, a sum means that we're going to add a bunch of things together, okay? And it's like that we start 
by plugging in that number into this formula. And then we work our way up consecutively to this one. You know, so we start with one, and then we go to two, three, four, five, and six, and that's the last one. But they all go here, and then we add all of our results together. Okay? All right, so it, maybe it looks bizarre when you first see it, but uh, watch. If I put 1 into that formula for i, i is where the input goes. It says let i be 1 to start with. It's going to say 2 times 1. Okay. Now I said that we would put everything from 1 to 6 in second. We would add all of our answers together. So what's after 1? 2. So we put 2 into that formula. And then what's after that? 3. So we put 3 into the formula. You know, this one right here, 2 times the input. i is the input. Uh, what's after 3? 4. 2 times 4. And then 2 times 5. And then 2 times 6. And then we're supposed to stop when we get to 6. Okay? Alright, now what's that going to look like? 2, 4, 2 times 2, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then you just do the math from there, all right? If you add all that up together, then you'll get 42. Okay. So that one's different, but, you know, it looks different. It is different. And you see this, like, phrase right there, indicated sum, and then you see the symbol. Hopefully that'll remind you that, okay, you start with this one, it, plug it into there, go up one by one to that, and add all the answers together.